Hello you lot. If you miss me, I'm sure missed you. Let's get into it. sunset so the reason I'm out on this nice walk this evening is because a few of you message to say or ask sorry have the sep spores from last September taken yet as there's been a lot of rain so let's go and find out shall we a few of you may remember uh, last September I was out looking for seps porcini mushrooms and I came across some in this area here and over there in some grouse. I uh, decided to do was to scatter all the, the dead ends basically in the spores, the sporing tubes. See if they'll actually take this time round in amongst these, uh, these pines and spruces and just see if they'll take really. And no seps yet. I find, found a couple of nice rustlers. The rushler or brittle gill family because they've got brittle gills here. It's a beautiful little specimen. Another rushler coming through here. I'll leave him for next time though because they're uh, quite small. And then over here, this is the Dyer's polypore. I showed you some of this last year. Traditionally used in dyes. It's really soft and velvety when it's young and when it's dry. It can be used for fire lighting purposes as well. Some much bigger brushlers. They're all out at the minute. Gorgeous brittle gill there. Lovely colour. All right, let's take a wander over there. Something. It's tapping me. Sounds like a bleat. He's really young. Whatever he is. Scarlantina maybe, or a slippery jack. Got a nice slippery jack there, I think. So that's good eating. There's the belit. As you can see, they've got sporing tubes rather than gills, so I'll take him, he's good. Another little baby here, but we'll leave him because he's only small. Jacks are thus known because they've got almost like a slime on the top of the cap. Slippery, slippery. But yeah, no steps just yet. These rushlers are absolutely everywhere, look. It's just popping up, there was a rosy one. Gorgeous sun this evening. The porcini spores that I dropped down here last year, last autumn, haven't taken yet, but it's still early. So I've been seeing a lot of people finding seps now because of the rain. I'm gonna head over there into the, the little gorse bushes and try and find my other little spot. I didn't leave any spores there last time but I didn't need to because it was a plentiful bounty, as you may recall. It just goes to show that I haven't been out filming in a while and I'm a little bit rusty. I haven't even been out in a while. <laughs> Full stop, let alone filming. I walked right past my spot. So I found him again and we'll have a look in the, in the bushes and shrubs and see if any beautiful seps are about. I mean, nothing yet. This place was absolutely littered with porcini mushrooms last summer. Sorry, last autumn. Nothing yet. Okay, not even any pins or buttons or anything. So I don't think this is a go. I'll insert an image here of the uh, the absolute haul that I got last time round. So hopefully that comes back to fruition this year, just later on in the season. Little cluster. These milk caps. Yeah, got some milk caps here. So they will lactate and secrete all that milk, which is why they're in the Lactarius family. Milk cap. They're beautiful. This single belief is the only thing that we've got so far. Sorry, by the way, for the wind. It's died down a little bit now. And sorry that I've not been out in ages and I've not been filming any content and sorry for the lack of beard too. So I've done another Britney moment, started to 
trim down and yeah it just all went to pot so anyway been so busy with um the festival that you know i just thank each and every one of you for your patience on the lack of content and cheers for sticking with me i'm back now thank you so much to everybody who went to the festival as well so the wild nuts festival went really well our very first pilot year yeah it was great i i can't believe you know the turnout the artists you know the guest speakers everybody that came and enjoyed themselves it was brilliant it's just what we wanted so thank you from the team to you yeah can't wait for next year look at that gorgeous thing got another edible this is the tawny grisette which is an amanita amanita family is one that i don't know a great deal about and it's got one of the deadliest mushrooms or two of the deadliest mushrooms in it ever so it's normally one to stay away from but i'm pretty certain that's a tawny grisette again absolutely gorgeous specimen That's two. A beautiful couple of silver birch. And of course, all of that stuff is wonderful firelighting material that just don't take from a living tree. Look at the size of this. This beautiful young polypore on this deadwood. Stunning colours and textures. This is a blusher. It might be a brown spotted amanita, but I think it's a blusher. And yeah, there we go, it's a blusher. This is an edible am amanita. This is from spring, winter, and autumn. You can see the different stages now. So this one's far older, younger specimen. And then this guy's opened up. The uh, Amanitas, these are mycorrhizal, so they have a symbiotic relationship with the host tree, which in this instance is this silver birch here. So it's going to share the mycelial network all the way up the tree and share nutrients and neuro pathways. And it's good to be back filming, so thank you for sticking with it. I will be back with more content. Got loads of decent collabs coming up as well, actually, which I'm excited to show you. I want to get out on a couple of solos as well, if I can. Just get out to the woods camping for once <laughs> and away from the stress of life so yeah i'll take you with me on those journeys thank you for sticking around some more of these spotted amanitas you might be able to make out they're in a big ring which is quite cool and the ring goes the whole way around in a ring as you can see a ring of mushrooms the whole way around and over there just spotted something very special <laughs> so you saw the milk cap from earlier this is also a milk cap and i think this is the one that i've been looking for for ages you can see these um concentric rings in the depressed cap you can see these pits around the outside you can just see a saffron color here and the rings are often sort of like a khaki green almost bluey grey, that kind of mixed paint water colour that you get. So this might be a saffron milk cap, in which case it's going to be delicious because it's got delicious in its name. Moment of truth. Oh yes baby. Look at that. I've never found one of these before. So this is a great choice edible. One of the best tasting mushrooms you can get. And this is a huge specimen. I'll just show you here, if I damage some of the gills, the milk that comes out is going to be more of an orangey colour, saffron, hence the name, and you can see even on the detail of the stipe, it's a saffron colour. Another little red rushler. I tend to stay away from red rushlers, so in the rushler genus or rushler family, I'll just get them out so you can see actually. If it's next to a beech tree, it's likely to be a beechwood sickener. It can make you a little bit sick. Sick, bruv. 
Right, let's go this way. Now three edible mushrooms, so that's good. How many is in my pocket? Four technically, if you count the blushes that I didn't get. Yeah, not looking too bad. So the mushroom season's definitely sprung into season early because of the um, the amount of rain we've had. These are scarlet wax caps, and they are waxy to the touch on the top of the cap. Gorgeous colouring. You get meadow wax caps as well, which are um, bright yellow or bright orange. These are scarlet. Some more look, just littering the ground with a burst of red and round heads. Um, often mistaken for magic mushrooms, but they're not. Here is quite nice and special. This is the egg sac or the vulva of the um, Amanita. Can't really tell because it's that young. It's still bursting out of its um, egg sac. I can't really tell what species it is, but it's in the Amanita family. And this is the cap. And you see all the speckles on here? That's the vulvaric remains from the egg sac that it will burst out of and it should straighten up and open out into a mushroom. Speckles on the top of the cap, uh, made quite famous obviously by the Amanita muscaria or the fly garrick, which is the red and white cartoony sort of toadstool that everybody knows. A psychoactive and poisonous mushroom. Also in the Amanita family, not in the agaric family. Nice ones down here, look, some field mushrooms. They are in the agaric family. Very similar to the um, ones you'd eat at home. This one's been half eaten by something, so yeah. Another edible species. We've got to be up to 10 or 15 different species so far on this sort of 25 minute walk. Probably walked a mile and a bit, if that. I'm still very close to the car. There's some more of the nice agarics. So the portobello mushrooms in this family, uh, the Augustus is in this family, the Prince, and your sort of, you know, your button mushrooms that you'd get in the supermarket, they're all in the agaric family. So you've got pinky brown gills and normally a white or creamy beige cap. Yeah, usually means you're in the agaricus genus. We might have jackpot, jackpot, another couple of beliefs. I think these are brown birch beliefs. Let me get him out because he's a good edible. Yeah, brown birch bleat, bang in. Another couple of decent edibles for the collection. More of these spotted amanitas or blushes. That's a really young one actually springing into life. So these are very early then in that case. You can see how small that is. And there's the vulvaric remains that will eventually look like that. Gorgeous color on this. This is another rushula. So in the brittle gill family, I think this is a swamp brittle gill. Um, yeah, the swamp brittle gills are normally yellow and in boggy areas, so around birches. So yeah, it's another good one. Now every type of edible belete is just coming out of the woodwork, it seems. So cracking red belete's here. Got another one down here. So these are red, but um, they will have a brown cap that starts to crack as well as they get older. Another couple of babies in there. Yellow paws. You've seen these on the channel before hundreds of times. They're very common where I am. But yeah, another good edible if you take the paws off. Sean Sorrell's here. I'll have to have a look though, but if we do, then that's really, really positive. Yep, and golden chanterelles. So I might come back for the rest, <laughs> but that's a really good one. So there's just some of the haul that we got today. And look at the color of that sky. Lastly, I'll show you this. So this is a common earth ball. Um, and if you see the inside of them, they're very dark. These are the ones that eventually go into a big puff of spores. So I'll insert some footage of when I've done that in the past in October, November time. But yeah. And there you go, the light is just about to go. So it's not always the early bird that catches the worm. <laughs> Even in the sunset, we can still get some decent edibles when you know where to look. The right habitat, the right and a bit of summer rain never hurts anyone either, so. And all within a mile of the car, so. Can't complain with that. And on a stunning evening like this, it's been raining all day, so it's a bit boggy underfoot, but it's 
gorgeous now. It's opened up, beautiful skies, beautiful weather. There you have it guys, little edible haul. Enjoyed that little uh, mushroom haul, educational walk, trail. Yeah, I'll be back soon. Stay good, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.